Today we're going to be diving hands first into Ultra Leap's Leap Motion 2. If you're curious about this device, want to know the specs, or hear what I think about it after putting it through its paces, I've got you covered. If you want to get the lowdown on how to integrate it with applications like VC Face or Steam VR, I'll include that here as well. If you don't have time to stick around for the full journey, I've made it super easy for you. You can check the description below. I've placed clickable timestamps so you can leap straight into the parts that interest you the most. Let's get handsy with the Leap Motion 2. The Leap Motion 2 is a hand tracking device and at the time of this recording is available for pre-order at $139 and it'll be shipping out sometime in the summer. It comes with the device itself, of course, and a USB-C to USB-C cable. Mine also came with a really nifty sticky back 3D printed mount, which will not come standard with the Leap Motion 2, but it can be purchased separately as an accessory. The device itself can either be used on a desktop, on a monitor, on a headset, or unofficially as some VTubers have used in the past, clipped onto a shirt. I actually found that the desktop and shirt method seemed to track the best. VR was good too, but I think because I couldn't see the device, it was harder to keep track of my hands going out of range. I'll admit, I'll never try the Leap Motion 1 other than very quickly at conventions, so I can't make hardcore direct comparisons. However, according to the company, the main differences between the two are that it's 30% smaller, features a higher resolution camera and increased FOV, and 25% lower power consumption. The Leap Motion 2 also has support for Windows, Android XR2, Mac OS, and eventually Linux, though for simplicity's sake, I'm only going to be covering Windows-based apps in this video. Getting everything set up was super easy, basically just downloading the control panel and then plug and play. It's recommended to use USB-C or 3.0 when plugging this into your device, as at 2.0 the hand tracking quality can degrade significantly. I tested it out in a few different desktop and VR related apps. For any specifics on how to get things set up, just skip ahead to that section. First I tried the Leap Motion 2 in the traditional VTuber way with VC Face. I had it on my desk just as a quick setup test and it worked beautifully. I also gave it a quick FOV test this way too to see how far my hands had to be before it couldn't track anymore and color me impressed. Next up in my foray into trying the Leap Motion 2 was with the Valve Index. I mounted that sucker with the provided mount to my index and tried Ultra Leap's hand tracking demo, Aurora. In it, they show you how you can use teleport, paint, and interact with the world in a way other than with controllers. Their demo was actually pretty good, and it really showed you what a native Steam VR application with hand tracking support could do. They even gave you a sample keyboard and some UIs you can mess with. If you want to be completely wireless, you can use a USB-C female to male adapter like the one I have here, and a shorter USB-C to USB-C cable just so the cable will stay out of the way. Although the one they provide works fine too if you don't mind it hanging a bit. Links will be in the description below if you want these add-ons. Because the Frunk actually contains a 3.0 port, you should have no issues with latency versus using something like a 2.0 port. Doing anything not natively built for hand tracking is a bit tricky when it comes to Steam VR, but after downloading the Steam VR driver for Leap Motion controllers, I was able to attempt to navigate around Steam VR and Half-Life Alex with only hand tracking. My offsets were wrong though, so it took a lot of back and forth with messing with numbers to get something to feel like it was right over my hands, but most Steam VR apps and games aren't built natively to support hand tracking. By the way, if you happen to know of any hand tracking apps on Steam VR, I would love to give them a try. I also gave this a shot with Live for funsies to see per request if I could get both the Vive Face Tracker and the Leap Motion 2 working at the same time with a regular 3.0 USB hub. You will need a 3.0 USB hub with as short of a cable as you can find, two USB 3.0 adapters, and as short of a USB-C to USB-C cable as you can buy. I'm surprised to say that you can actually use both at the same time, but results may vary. Sometimes when I tried it, the tracking stopped working, but other times it worked pretty flawlessly. Though my setup was janky as hell, so you're gonna need a better way to mount the USB hub and face tracker and maybe some shorter cables than I had to test with. Overall, after each section, I will say that the device ran pretty hot, but never went into meltdown mode. I think once I had it on for about three hours because I forgot to unplug it and it still seemed to be functioning fine. For general use, first download the Ultra Leap tracking installer, plug your Leap Motion to the back of your PC using the USB-C, and simply launch the control panel. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, there's a couple of different ways you can mount the Leap Motion to, depending on what it is you want to do with it. Either keep it on your desk, 
mount it to your monitor, clip it to your shirt, or stick it on a VR headset. For VC Face or any other VTuber software that might support Leap Motion controllers, make sure that the avatar you are using has hand and finger support. If you're going with a Vroid avatar, like I am here, it should have this already by default. For this use case, I recommend either placing your Leap Motion on your desk or clipping it to your shirt, though clipping it to your shirt will probably be the most convenient, and I found that it did track pretty well this way. In VC Face, all you have to do is click Track Leap Motion, and it's as simple as that. To use the Leap Motion 2 in VR, you need to download a special driver in GitHub, and the link for that will be in the description below. Extract the files to your common Steam VR Drivers folder. In the Steam config steamvr.vr settings file, open it up with a notepad and scroll down and under the Steam VR section, edit the line, activate multiple drivers from false to true. If you need to edit any settings, such as the offset of the hands, you can do so in the common Steam VR drivers leap resources settings file. It took me a lot of adjusting and experimenting to get something halfway decent, and the numbers are in meters. If you want to make live changes without having to restart Steam VR, simply right click on the Leap Motion icon in your tray and click Restart and Apply Settings. Make sure that in the Ultra Leap Control Panel that you select Head Mounted as the mount type if you're going to be using this in VR. When in VR, it's a bit hard to navigate. The boxes that appear near your hands are how you navigate by touch, and the green laser pointers indicate where your fingertips actually are. To select something, you bend your index finger as if you were pulling a trigger. If you want to switch back to regular controllers without having the hand tracking menus up, just open up your Steam VR settings and go to Startup Shutdown, Manage Add-ons, Turn Leap Off, and then Restart Steam VR. Well, now we've reached the end of our journey through the land of Leap Motion 2. Hopefully, I've given you a hand at understanding this nifty piece of tech. Remember, it's not about having the upper hand, it's about letting your hands take the upper stage. The Leap Motion 2 is no small handful. It truly brings a new level of immersion to your avatars and to VR. Now remember, in the grand scheme of tech devices, it's still early days for hand tracking, but with devices like the Leap Motion 2 on the market, it's clear that the future is well within our grasp. In hand sight, I must say that this has been quite an experience. The Leap Motion 2 doesn't let you down when it comes to tracking your hands in a most natural and intuitive way. But keep in mind that like all tech, your mileage may vary and patience may be required when setting this up for something like VR, for example. The Leap Motion 2 is available for pre-order right now, so if this hands-on review has sparked your interest, now's your chance to get a handle on it. If you've come across any more Steam VR hand tracking applications that you'd love for me to test out, please leave a comment down below. It'd be handy to keep our community updated about all the fresh and exciting applications out there. Before I hand the reins over to you, remember to hit that like button if this video was helpful and don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials and content always at your fingertips. Until then, keep reaching for the stars and remember, the world is in your hands. Thanks for joining me today. I'm off to count the number of puns in this outro. Remember, every journey starts with a single leap. And until next time, keep those hands waving.